there tonight. Hallelujah. Boy, I put you on shouting ground. Lordy, mercy. I don't know. Well, y'all, I felt. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good spirit in here tonight. Glad you in church. Say amen. Amen. What a blessing. That's good. Some of y'all to obey the Lord. We'd just be getting started good right now. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Listen, you need to get in on this. Don't wait the last night of the revival to get right with God. You need a good fresh touch. That's, that's why we have these meetings. Youth rally, youth camp, revival, camp meeting, winter camp. So every, every two or three months you need a good smack from the Lord to keep you lined out. Amen. Go ahead, sister. Amen. He's still there. Hey, man. He won't. Hey, man. Yes, he is. Nope, he don't. Hey, man. Hey, man, sister. All you kids, if you got a mom and dad that'll take you to church, you better thank God for it. I'd probably be in hell right now if it wasn't my mama. I probably would right now. I'd, I'd be 90 miles an hour on my way. Yeah. Amen. Somebody else? Anybody else? Right quick. Right quick. Okay. Amen, sister. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's good. Anybody else? Right quick. Amen. Yes, sir. Glory to God, brother. That's good. Amen. Anybody else? Right quick. That's revival there, boy. God's people start getting excited about what the Lord did for them. Not who won a stupid ball game, the Richmond Rednecks. I better not. Uh, we ain't going to get started. Don't get me started on the Richmond Rednecks. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. All right. Get your Bible open to Genesis chapter 45. The book of Genesis chapter 45. I heard we have people watching from home tonight, I think, and uh, wherever you watch from home tonight, I, yeah, it's, uh, we welcome y'all. Good to see everybody here. Good to see Preacher, Preacher Utley and Mrs. Utley with us tonight. Thank you, brother, for coming and driving all the way down here to be with us. And Man, we've been having time, and I'm, I'm telling you, I, 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 that young man that got saved last night, right there he is, and uh, he's back here tonight, and uh, he got saved last night, and I told him I was 18 when I got saved, and still good, still yeah. works. So uh, just a second right quick, don't forget now, tomorrow night, as he said, we're going to be uh, our, a bunch of people's coming, a huge crowd, of, uh, and then we're going to mix up here a little bit and practice our choir because our plan is uh, to make a live CD recording at our camp meeting this year on uh, Friday night and Saturday night when all y'all come up there, and that's our plan. We're working on it and headed toward that end, and a lot of... A lot of Several miracles will have to happen between now and then. Uh, we can all get together. We're going to sing some songs probably that either one of the other groups don't even sing. Uh, we'll try and get them together and ready. So, so uh, be praying about that. And uh, we'll uh, practice and have church tomorrow night at the same time. Uh, so uh, uh, be sure and be here tomorrow night. I know it's Friday night. I don't know if the Rednecks are playing or not. But uh, they ain't a ball game in the state of North Carolina. Important is what we're going to have here tomorrow night. Matter of fact, they ain't, they ain't a peewee t-ball game in the world as is important as what we're going to have here tomorrow night. That's right. I know people got their priorities all mixed up, uh, but uh, we're, we're trying to help the kids, and so uh, you don't want to miss now tomorrow night. Be here. Bring somebody with you. If you know somebody that's not saved or somebody in your family, look, you can use that, you can use that uh, dinner, supper we're having. Tell them they're going to get free supper. Yeah. Jesus fed them with the loaves and the fishes. Uh, you tell them, come on. We got barbecue, ain't that right, preacher? 
uh, barbecue big, uh, tomorrow night in church and chicken. And so <laughs> don't forget that. Amen. Do not forget that. All right, take your Bible now. Genesis chapter number 45. Here in the book of Genesis, if you read the Bible, you know this story. This is the story of Joseph and his estranged brethren. Them guys, they wasn't getting along too good right now at this point. Because back when they was young, you know the story. Joseph had them dreams and they got jealous of him and they hated him, hated him. Joseph was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ in over 150 particulars. You, you can't read that story. You see Jesus all the way through that. It's amazing. It's amazing. Whoever wrote Genesis knew a lot about Jesus. And I know who wrote it. And uh, uh, oh, there he comes and moving up. Six hours for the Lord, my foot. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. That's judging. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good to see you, brother. He would drive six hours for the Lord. He really would. Oh, yeah. And other things. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm just kidding with you, man. Uh, uh, anyway, we're, uh, uh, they, they were, he's in jail. Joseph was in jail. <laughs> he's in jail, right? And his brothers come down there to get corn because they had a famine up in their land. Yeah. And Joseph, by this time, he'd grown matured and he had all this Egyptian garb, probably had stuff on his head and everything. They didn't know who he was. And he looked at him, well, 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 well. Look who's here. Uh, the sun, the moon, the stars, they're, 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 she's finally, they're gonna do exactly what you told me, Lord. I want you to look yonder. So they come in and he messed with them there a couple of times, you know. Uh, he, he just messing with their heads a little bit. That's a picture of Jesus during the tribulation, how he's gonna do Israel. And uh, he, he's, uh, he, he gives them their corn and then he puts their money in their, in their sack, you know, and they get back and say, oh, Lord, we're dead. They're going to kill us. Uh, they're gonna, and, he, and then he told me his spies had to go bring their little brother. Oh, no, no. If, you, if, you, if you'd read your Bible, I wouldn't have to tell all this stuff uh, to get us to where I'm going to preach about tonight. But since you don't, I, I have to, I'm going to have to tell you this story. Well, anyway, it was one of them times when they, when they come down there and Joseph said, all right, here, look, I'm going to fill your, your sacks here full of corn. Now you take that corn home to your father. Yeah. Now, look at it. Genesis 45 and look at verse number uh, 23. Joseph speaking to his brethren. They did not yet know who he was. And to his father he sent after this manner ten asses laden with the good things of Egypt and ten she asses laden with the corn and bread and meat for his father, by the way. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, See that ye fall not out, by the way. Yeah. Now, that's what I want to preach on tonight. That is the title of the sermon. Last night, that few got it right out of the scripture. This is right in the Bible. He said, See that ye fall not out, yeah. by the way. He told his brethren, he said, now look, you got a job to do. You take this corn and you take it to the Father. And you, you see to it. Make sure that you don't fall out by the way. Now he, he, he meant one of two things by that statement. He either meant first, now look guys, there's a lot of cliffs between here and home and there's a lot of old, you like, you like to fall out of one of them wagons? Make sure you don't fall out and break your neck on the way home. He either meant that or he meant in the old country preacher way that we've always said in the mountains, uh, don't get out here and get in an argument and fuss with each other and have a falling out. That's what we say in the, in the mountain churches. Where's old so-and-so? Yeah, we had a falling out. Him and his family quit. And uh, I mean, and, and the woods is full of them. It probably is the same here too. I guarantee you Richmond County probably got 10,000 people sitting at home tonight that used to go to church re ready, regular, and had a little falling out. I've had them tell me that. Me and that preacher had a little falling out. We didn't see no eye to eye. Well, me and them people had a falling out, brother. You know what the Lord told, you know what Joseph told them, a picture of Jesus? He said, you take this corn home to the Father and see that you fall not out by the way. 
He said, you stick together, boy. And so I want to preach about that tonight. The Lord gave me this message uh, a long time ago, and I want to give it to you tonight. Now, I want to say, first of all, this evening, that Christians fall out with each other. Is that an understatement or what? Lord, have mercy. I'm telling you to live above with the saints we love. Boy, ain't that going to be glory. To live below with the saints we know, that's another story. That's what somebody said. I'm going to tell you tonight, bro. Listen, if you, if you had everybody, I, I guarantee you, Preacher Utley there, he was pastoring all them many years. If he had everybody that ever been in that church, they'd, you'd probably had 10,000, brother. And, and, and uh, you know, people come, they come real good for a while, and they get mad about something. They get upset about something. This, they don't like this. They don't like that. I mean, we'd probably have 5,000 in our church right now if all the people that had been there and said, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And, and one thing or another, Christians fall out with each other. Now, Joseph knew these guys. He grew up with them boys. He knew how they was, and he knew they'd get to going up that road. Of us. Hey, they're going up that road now. It's a long way from Egypt back to where Daddy, the father, is. And they're walking up through there, and it's hot and dry, and they're in the desert, and they're talking to them donkeys are pulling that corn and sheep, and one of them looks at the other and says, you know why this is happening, don't you? Well, oh, shut up. You're always, you trying to hex us and put gene on. He said, well, you know it's because we sold our brother. Shut up. You was in on it too. You're just as bad as I was. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You can open your mouth one more time. Yeah, yeah. You Christians act like that. You better believe it. I've, I've heard of them hitting each other over the head in a business meeting with the Bible. Yes, sir. I heard kicking the preacher out and throwing his Bible out after him. That's right, brother. And they go up through there, and he said, "Now don't go up through there and start fussing and arguing." And one said, "Well, I." And the other one said, "Well, I would. I really didn't want to sell our brother. You know, this is happening because of what we done to our brother, right?" And they said, "Well, well, huh, it don't matter now. Let's get to." And Joseph told him that. He said, "Look, you guys, don't you get up there and start." Uh, sitting and arguing, acting a fool. Uh, you act right and act like you got some sense and take this corn home to the Father. Now, I'm a mountain person. I love the mountains. Further back in the mountains, the better I like it. But them are the stubbornest, not headedest, hard headed bunch of people. Honry, honry. You know, they say honry. Honry is a bunch of people you've ever met in your life. I mean, brother, so I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I'm grandma, I, Papa used to sit right over there in that corner and he spit out that winter every single Sunday and Papa all that and we never did do it like that when Papa was here you know I, oh my goodness my, ain't no telling what people could get done for God if we'd quit our fussing and fighting and belly ache. listen brother there's enough people right here this evening to turn this town upside down for God if y'all quit picking each other and nitpicking each other and backbiting each other and, and see that you fall not out by the way Lordy mercy I heard about a church up there in the mountain. No lie. Ralph Sexton said it. He said years ago, one of them little old churches up there in the mountain, they got up there and they got in a business meeting and they got to arguing over the roof. They was going to put a new roof on the church. And half of that crowd wanted brown shingles on the roof and the other half of that crowd wanted gray shingles on the roof. They fussed and they argued. They had off the mess everyone. And uh, uh, you say, well, which side finally won that preacher? Uh, Depends on which side of the road you come up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't believe that, do you? Yeah. It's the truth. Yeah. He said, high fat church has got brown shingles on it. I'm not lying. That's Baptist for you right there. Yeah. And the other half's got gray. What a testimony to the community of how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell, whatever. Lord, I've, I've heard that verse and I thought, I ain't no such thing. <laughs> I, I, brethren together. Well, your foot too, brother. I ain't no brethren dwell together in unity. It would be pleasant if, if everybody would. I'm telling you, brother, they, 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 they think, well, we've all, I've heard them getting mad over what side of the church the piano was going to be on. No joke. No joke. Well, I tell you one thing. I church up way up there in the mountains, and a little old mountain church had been there a hundred years. And uh, this pastor went there, and he started pastoring that church. And he he said uh, everything going pretty good, but he noticed every Sunday between Sunday school and preaching, they have a little break there, you know, about ten minutes. And he said everybody on that side of that church would get up and come over here and say it, and everybody on this side of that church would go over there and say it. He thought, well, whatever, I don't know why they do it. He looked, he done that two or three months. Finally asked somebody, he said, uh, hey, uh, hey, that sounded a little weird or something, but why do y'all switch sides like that? And uh, one of them that said, 
Lord, I don't know, preacher. I've been coming here all my life. That's, that's the way we've always done it. And, and he went to the older people and he said, why do y'all switch sides like that between Sunday school and preach? They said, I don't know. We've come here all of our lives. That's what we've always done. Nobody even knows why they did it. And, uh, and they, and they, uh, they uh, got to looking, went back in the minutes and the minutes and the minutes and the minutes. That's, that's, what, the, that's, what, a, that's what the unprepared do the unnecessary, read the minutes and waste the hours. That's what they do in most churches. And uh, they said, uh, they got in there and they looked and they found out that 150 years ago, that little one room church building and they, they, it was cold, freezing, snow that deep up there, and they said that they had great big old pot-bellied wood stove that sat over here like the gift wall, and they burned wood in it, went out the door like that. And so what they'd do, these people get their toes warm there in Sunday school and put that like that, and then during the preaching, they'd swap sides, and this crowd could be over here near where the heat was, and these idiots sitting there with central air and, and nice heat pump going outside. <laughs> doing that, they have no idea why they're even doing it. Now, now if he'd got up and said we ain't gonna do that no more, half of them would have probably quit. They don't, and it's never nothing scriptural. It's always some nitpicky. We don't do this. We don't do that. I know a church. I know a preacher where they got mad at him because he didn't call on somebody to dismiss in prayer. You know how sometimes preachers say, you're at liberty to go, you know, I, and you, they just do it that way. Oh, I can't believe it. I mean, get mad good night in the morning, y'all. I mean, fuss and argue and fuss and gripe. I, I like old, uh, old uh, Hudson Tail down yonder in Atlanta. He took that big church, and it was one of these big, fancy Baptist churches, and I mean, they had a committee for everything. I mean, everything was run by the deacon board. Everything was run... The, the, all he was supposed to do was get up there and preach and keep his mouth shut. And he says he's down to the flea market one day and this guy had this uh, bunch of stuff down there and he's trying to sell before he left. He had these huge big old boxes full of toilet tissue and cases of them. And he said, look, preacher said, how much you want for that? He said, I'll tell you what I do, preacher. He said, I'm getting ready to pack up and leave here. He said, I'll, I'll make you a deal on that if you want it for your church. He said, how much? He, it is unbelievable. He said, you give me just a few minutes. He ran up to the church and went in the secretary's office got a purchase order and wrote it and gave it to that man and got that tissue paper. He took that stuff and put it in the closet down in the, ba in the basement of the church and, put it, and it's Sunday. Sunday evening comes. The preacher's walking down the hall and the head daddy rabbit was standing right there. All them little old bitty churches has a head daddy rabbit. He's been a deacon for 150, 159 years. His papa gave the land that that church is built on. And ain't nothing gonna happen without his approval. And what they say, yes, sir, yes, sir. That's the way they are. And he got to there, and he said, Pastor. That pastor went over there like that. He opened that closet door, and he said, what is that? He said, I don't know. Toilet paper, man, don't you know what that is? He's, he said, I mean, what's it doing in this office? He said, brother, I found a deal on that. He said, do you know we did not vote on this? He said, brother, I didn't mean to cause no trouble. I, I, I mean, the deal couldn't refuse, honest to goodness. I thought, it'd be a, I thought everybody would be glad. I, he said, no. He said, he said, that come in one hair of splitting that whole church. He called it the issue of the tissue. <laughs> He said, now can you imagine how the devil laughs at us while we go and fuss and bicker. And uh, Listen, I've seen a thousand people quit church and it's never anything over the preaching. It's not over doctrine. It's always some little old gripe didn't like this. Listen, over in Asheville, this is no lies in the newspaper. There's two guys got in a fight uh, over a church seat, over a church seat where a guy said he got his seat and another guy came in and got his seat. I'm not lying. They got in a fight and beat, hitting each other and one brother chowed down on the other on his neck uh, and bit him and, uh, and, and like a vampire. And, and they got in a fight and they put it in ice for paper and they, said, and they got in a fight and they said uh, the police had to call the police to break it up. And guess, oh, by the way, guess which seat it was? Back pew. Y'all yeah. okay. good here. It ain't like this most places. Uh, listen, uh, church is the only place I know where you got to go early to get a back seat. Yeah. 
I'll tell you, that's what they did. But anyway, uh, brother, Christians fall out with each other. That's right, brother. Christians fall out uh, with each other. Lord, they fuss and they argue and they gripe and they complain. Hey, yak, 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 yak. Can I, can I say something to y'all tonight? We really want God to move in this church. We really want God to bless this revival. You want the Lord to mess this Sunday and next Sunday? Make up your mind here tonight. You're not going to fall out, by the way. I mean, look, you ain't gonna have 80 people in here and everything go your way all the time. Everything don't go my way all the time. I don't always like everything everybody does. Good night, get over it. Uh, Grow up a little bit. Uh, Be be in a little bit with each other, amen? Uh, Amen, don't be so doggone hard to get along with. I mean, get, get, be right, be nice to each other. You ever thought of that? The Bible said as much as lieth in you. Live peaceably with all men that your hearts might be knit together in love. See that you fall not out by the way. Number two, husbands and wives fall out with each other. You see, if the devil can get in your home, you know, you've always heard people say the the church ain't no better. And that's true, that's true. Our church is no stronger than the homes that make up the, you ain't gonna fuss and fight and on, at home, and have hell at home, and then walk in here and have heaven. Right. It don't work like that. Right. It, it don't work like that. You can't bicker and run. Lady told me one time, she said, I don't see how in the world my husband can stand in church and raise his hand at the way he acts at home toward the rest of us. That, that's a bad testimony. I mean, husbands and wives fall out. Y'all got a lot of young couples in here tonight, and I don't tell you, brother, I'm telling you, brother, the devil's got his guns on your marriage. He wants to tear up your home. He wants to make that, that wife or that husband uh, uh, flip their lid and go crazy and run off and, and do something stupid. He's got you, he's got, he's got his hair. Listen, these little kids running around in here tonight, how precious these little old boys and girls in here. The devil hates that. He hates that with a passion. He won't, listen, he'll get in your marriage. He'll bust up your home. He'll bust up your marriage in a heartbeat if you'll let him. And I'm telling you, make every married couple here tonight, I challenge you by the word of God, you see that you fall not out by the way, amen? I mean, get along with each other, amen? That's right, brother. Uh, I saw 90% of you get some marriage counseling. I've been marriage counseling for 40 years. I can give you, I, I know they write books that thick and I can tell you immediately in two sentences how to solve 90% of your marriage problem. I knew it. Oh, what makes you so smart? Going through it with 10,000 people and all the junk I've been through myself. You can't do all that and not learn something. And there's two things you can do if you're, and help solve your marriage problems. Number one, Treat each other with the same respect you treat everybody else with. Isn't it amazing how nice we are to everybody else and how hateful, oh boy, it's getting quiet in here, preacher. I gave you a chance. You should have stood up and given a testimony and we'd have a shouting service. Sit there and take it like a man. (laughs) And how hateful we are to each other. I have a man come in and say, oh, you look pretty today. Oh, you look nice. And never tells his wife that. Lord, it's quieter than turkey farm yard on Thanksgiving Day in here. I'll tell you when to pray, don't bow your head. Look up here. Hey, listen, now basically, you do that. You treat each other the same respect you treat everybody else with. And the second thing is don't take each other for granted. There's somebody like to have that old boy you married. <laughs> I know I hear it all the time I've been through this everything but I'm telling you brother you uh, now basically basically men and women are different uh, the the modern day women's live movement uh, believes men and women are the same men and women are not the same they've never been the same they ain't the same now and the most confused crazy nut I've ever heard of is a man who wants to be a thinks he is a woman or a woman who wants to be or thinks she is a man that's crazy you're crazy enough already uh, without getting and just a junk like that in your head. But men and women are different. Now listen, give you a lesson on human nature. Men are naturally selfish. We can <laughs> pay no attention to that judgmental, uh, uh, rebellious. <laughs> now, <laughs> the tr- it's true. It's true. We are. Unless God helps us, 
You know what men do? They're out for old number one. I can prove that any day of the week. I mean, you give a man a baby. You give a man a baby, he'll look at hey, throw it up a time or two. Hand it back down there. Sit down on You give a woman a baby, she sticks that hip out there. And they got a little saddle right here that we ain't, I ain't got and don't want. They got a little thing that sticks out right there. They'll sit that baby on there and walk around the house three and four hours, brother. I see them walk around and walk. I, I was a man won't do that. They ain't gonna be, I, I, when mine was little, if they cried, I just set them down. Now you can crawl, it ain't gonna kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I tell my girls, Carrie's probably watching right now. I, they'd say, Daddy, I'm sick. I said, Prove it, throw up. Yeah. If you ain't too sick to throw up, you ain't sick. And then I said, okay, I'm throwing up. I said, well, you always feel better when you throw up. Now let's go get ready for church. I ain't kidding. I'm not, you think I'm joking. I'm not. Right, listen, brother, man, man don't fool with it. But a woman, she got taste. A man is selfish. That's why you can, you can afford them new boots, them hunting boots, but she needs something done at the dentist's office. You ain't got no money and you can't afford it. You better say amen, girls. You're coming up next. You better shout while you can. He said, he said boots is cheaper. Boots cheaper than teeth. But, but listen, listen, y'all. That's why. Yeah, if he wants that boat, buddy, he'll finagle around. Oh, yeah. But when she, if she got a, needs a dress, no, we can't afford it. We spent all this money last week. Uh, men are just natural. I heard about these guys. He, this fella, he played golf every single Monday. Hell or high water, brother, he played golf. Yep. I mean, he never missed a Monday out there on the golf course. One Monday that's out there playing. Him and his buddy, he's out there teeing up like this right here. And all of a sudden, a funeral procession come up the road. He said all the cars had their headlights on. It was real dark and everything. And he about ready to smack that ball. And he, right about, and he just stopped like this took his hat off, bowed his head for a second. And that guy said, my goodness, man, I, I didn't know you was a, had a that's, that's very respectful of you doing that. He said, well, we was married 25 years. <laughs> that's a man. Yeah. A man gonna do what he gonna do. It don't matter what. Yeah. Amen, ladies, ain't that the way he is? Now, we gotta fight against that, fellas. We have to fight against that. We have to fight against being selfish. That's why the Bible said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself. You can't do that in your natural ability. You got to do that through the Lord. You got to have the Lord. Lord, help me. Lord, help me to love my wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands and wives fall out with each other, brother. Amen. Amen. And, and the truth is, I do a lot of marriage counseling. I sit them in my office, and I talk to one, and the other one sits outside the office door. Then the other one comes in, and I talk to them, and I have the other, the other one sits outside the office door, and then I talk to them both together. And when, and when that, one of them comes in, I, I can't believe we're talking about the same home. You ask a man, how's everything at home? Oh, all right, I reckon. They're clueless. She's about ready to pack her clothes. <laughs> Boy, I love you all to see. It's quiet in here, and he, he don't he don't get it. He say if he if he's fed, and he he got a good place to sleep, yeah. he, he's all right. Don't have to worry about him. Men are like this. Uh, women are like woo 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 woo. woo, woo. Yeah. All over the place. And God made us that way. Nothing wrong with that. But but he's, he's he said uh, uh, how 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 do you know? What a man's supposed to do? He said, I don't know. And I get her in there and I say, uh, how's things going? Oh, it's awful. Oh, it's awful. I'm not ready. Man. And it's going down. He's driving me crazy and I can't stand a kid. And I'm, I'm about ready to blow my brains out. Because men don't even get it. I heard about a man one time. Him and his wife went to marriage counselor and sat in front of a professional counselor. And they talked two or three hours there. And he said, uh, how's things going? She unloaded there for about 30 minutes. He said, ask him how things going. He said, fine, I reckon. And finally, that therapist grabbed his wife, the guy's wife, and went, Whoa, planted one on her, brother, smacked it right in the mouth, kissed her, and throwed her back down on the couch. 
He said, now that's what your wife needs. At least twice a week. And that guy said, well, I, I can have her here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> that's a man. That's what he meant. They don't even get how you feel. A man can't understand how, is there a man wrote a book on everything men know about women and it's just blank pages through the whole thing. <laughs> don't know nothing. You think you got them figured out? You're in for a shock, big boy. You ain't never gonna figure no woman out. They're weird. I, I mean, they're different. Uh, they're, I'm telling you, brother, you can't figure them out. But you gotta love your wife like Christ loved the church. So a man's problem is selfish. Now what's a woman's problem? her mouth <laughs> she can't keep it shut she'd say it or die yeah. <laughs> now you like me a minute ago I'm happy I'm trying to help y'all tonight yeah a man comes into work I can prove look get, if you don't believe what I'm saying put all the men over in that room put all the women over in that room and record it <laughs> I'll prove it in court I can prove it in court Man comes in, kicks his shoes off. How'd your day go today? That's all right, pretty good. Ask her how her day is. Well, I tell you one thing, I got up this morning, first thing, and I knew that I shouldn't have done that. After I took the kids to school, Mama needed me to go turn down, and I went over here and took Mama's, and they was closed, and then I went back, and Lord, I didn't ask for your life history. I just said, well, how's your day? Yeah. <laughs> <Free>. <laughs> Woo, we're having revival now, anyway. Amen. <laughs> you done run her off. <laughs> but listen, y'all, that's okay. That's okay. You'd say it or die. You heard about that one guy? He said, my wife speaks 140 words a minute with gusts of up to 180. <laughs> it's on and on and on and on, on. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm telling you. I said, so that guy, uh, that guy, uh, he, he, was, he was trying to, be nice and, and she was a fussing and she was a fighting and she was a arguing and, and uh, uh, but some of them get pretty mean too especially them old women old women get mean if they ain't right with God I, I've seen them in a rest home before who there ain't nothing uglier than a wicked old woman <laughs> now, <laughs> that's, it's true look at some of them old movie stars and everything that old, old hag all painted up Lord David, Lord David like, like Liz Taylor she'd had so many facelifts they she had this big old thing right here on her forehead and they got to looking at it as her belly button. <laughs> they pull, they're pulling it up there so far. I can't think, but it, you know, they're ugly. And, and you know something? It's hard to, I mean, she said, this old man one sitting one time, he looked at her and he said, now honey, you know I ain't gonna be around much longer. She said, I know it honey, but I love you and I, I've stuck with you. He said, honey, can I ask you a question? When I die, are you going to let your next husband have my fishing rods? She said, well, yeah, I guess. I said, I mean, ain't gonna, you, ain't, you can't take them to heaven with you. I mean, ain't no use in just throwing them away. I, yeah, yeah, I guess we'll. He said, honey, are you going to let your next husband have my boots? She said, well, I, I guess so. I mean, I don't know why not. You can't. It ain't going to do you no good. I ain't no use throwing away. He said, honey, are you going to let your next husband have my shotgun? She said, yeah. He said, honey, are you going to let my, your next husband have my golf clubs? She said, no, he's left-handed. <laughs> that old wicked hussy done had her one picked out. In that rest home, she done had her eye on one. Yeah. Putting poison in his food, probably. <laughs> Want to boot him on out. Yeah. Hey, husbands and wives fall out with each other. Now look, any two people that's got a brain gonna butt heads. Yeah. That's why the Bible says for a wife to submit to the husband, that don't mean he's God, he's not Lord, but she's supposed to submit and follow his leadership. Amen? Amen. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what it says. One lady told me, she said, well, do you know how hard it is for to submit to somebody? I thought, well, do you know how hard it is to love somebody like you enough to die for you? Yeah. 
Just as hard for us as it is you. Amen. Quit you whining. Let's all try to do what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen, brother Danny. Amen. Don't go to bed mad. That's the worst thing you can do. Go to bed. Well, you want you want to pray? No. God ain't gonna hear us no way. <laughs> do your own praying. You say you've been up my house sneaking, looking in the window, ain't you, preacher? No, I've been doing this a long time. I know how Christians are. They fall out with each other. I'll say this, thirdly, I'm gonna have to hurry. I don't usually preach this long. Y'all need, probably need it so bad, I reckon. Number three, people fall out with the preacher. People fall out with the preacher. Oh my goodness. Good night in the morning. If I had a dime for everybody got mad at me, a lady got mad at me not long ago. She'd come to church real good and sit like right here where these girls sitting like right on the second row. And she didn't come for a while and didn't come for a while. And I got to notice, I said, where's, where's she at? I didn't know where she lived or nothing. Right, I went and visited her. And, and uh, one said, you know, I saw her at the store the other day, Brother Danny. And I asked her where she'd been. And she said, Danny Castle walked right by me and I tried to check his hand and he wouldn't. And she quit. Her, her kid, never went, quit church over it. I said, that ain't true. I've never walked right by somebody and deliberately not shake their hand. Never have. I mean, maybe, I mean, you know, we, we got other stuff on our mind Amen. besides you. <laughs> yeah. Some people think the whole thing is all about, I mean, we got 15 visitors here and you're mad to preach because he won't stop and listen to your sad story uh-huh. about how you thought you had the Wuhan flu this week and you, and you went to the doctor and got checked out. Now look, I'm sorry you feel bad, but we can't spend our whole time I mean, with just one person. I mean, there's a lot of y'all. I mean, there's a lot of people and only one preacher. And I'm telling you, you give him a break, people. I mean, he made out of the same stuff you are. Well, I tried to talk to Brother Ronnie Wayne. He wasn't there. And nobody said a word to me. I just ain't been, I ain't been doing this a long time. I'm telling you what, brother, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Uh, she said, uh, uh, she said, it's unbelievable that Danny won't come. And she still ain't come back to church. What about this preacher? Woman come up to him and said, Preacher, I feel like it's about your time to leave this church. You've been here long enough. He said, Ma'am, I believe you've been here longer than I have. Maybe it's your turn to <laughs> time to leave. But you know how the average Baptist, old Southern Baptist church, they keep a pastor 18 months. Yeah. It takes him eight, about two years to figure that crowd out and then they're ready to ship him on down the road and get them another. People fall out with a preacher. Well, he didn't shake my hand. Well, I had my booger in my nose and he knew I felt bad and he should have come over and prayed with me. But it, you know, I don't know how it is around here, but you got one person in the hospital 40 miles that way and another person in another hospital 40 miles that way and you can't be two places at once, y'all. It's impossible. I mean, good night, y'all. People fall out with the preacher. People fall out with it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. We need to make up our mind, hey, Hey, if you got a man of God that'll preach that book and believe that King James Bible and rightly divide it, well, you better get in here and say, hey, we're gonna stick in here together. We're not gonna fall out by the way. He, he might say something that rubs you wrong. He might uh, ruffle your feathers once in a while. I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that didn't hit me once in a while. I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that wouldn't talk about my sin. You let the man of God get up and let the chips fall where they will and preach that book and if you're guilty say oh me and if you ain't say amen then you say preach it brother let's get the corn home to the father amen Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy I heard about this preacher uh, 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 preacher's son he's at school you know how little boys like to brag on their daddy at school they all love to brag on their daddy one kid said he said my daddy's a lawyer and he said, we own a place on the lake. We own a nice big house. We got jet skis and we got uh, boats and we go there every weekend and we have a big time. Next kid stepped up and he said, that ain't nothing. My daddy's a doctor. And he said, we own a place up in the mountains and we got snowmobiles and we go skiing and we go up there in the wintertime. We have the best time ever. And the preacher's kid sat there and sat there and sat there. He finally got up and said, 
That ain't nothing my daddy owns hell. They said, you're crazy. He does not. He does, does, does not done it. They said, he does too. My daddy owns hell. They said, you're crazy. Hey, what are you talking about? He said, he does. I heard him tell mama the deacons get it to him. <laughs> Don't tell nobody I said that, okay? Just kidding, just kidding. Amen. But it's the truth. Yeah. It ain't your job to straighten the preacher out. Amen. If he gets out of line, the Lord will deal with him. I guarantee it. Yeah. Amen. Lord, I, I, I one time said to them, guys come down and they tried to straighten out the preacher and they was gonna change everything in the church and I don't care what you say, you ain't got no right to do that. I, I want to jump up there and say, hey, try that in a small church. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know that song. I never listened to that song. But I admire the old boy. He's got enough guts to stand up for what he believes. Yeah. Yep. Don't fall out. Don't fall out. You got your feelings hurt? Look, you ain't gonna have revival. I heard this story, Brother Bobby. This little old country church up in the mountains. And they got to fussing and fighting. I mean, you know what a church split is. You know what a church split. Where half get mad and one half leaves. A church, Dr. Ruckman always said, a church don't split half. It splits three ways. Half go with the bunch that leave, or third goes with the bunch that leaves, a third stick with the preacher, and a third just go out in the bushes somewhere and get out of church. It ain't half and half. And you know, they had a big split one night, and they got to fussing. We ain't gonna do that. Yes, you are. We was here before you was. No, you are. And they had a big, so one group got together, and they took a, went to the hardware store and bought a chain, and a padlock, and padlocked that door. It didn't have one little front door to that church. The said, ain't getting back in here. We got the key. Well, when that happened, Brother Ronnie, the other group went down to the hardware store, bought another lock and chain, locked it up, said, you ain't getting in either. Somebody called the cops, and had to get the law involved. Then the sheriff went down to the hardware store, bought another chain, and a padlock, and right there and said, neither none of you is coming in here. We're going to settle this in court. And they just shut her down. And they said one day after it had been about two or three weeks, one of the men was walking up the road, and he heard somebody singing. And he was saying, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is, he said, there can't be nobody in that church. It's got three chains and padlocks on. Who in the world, what in the world is that? And he kept going over there, getting over there closer, and he could hear it. And one old man that loved that church had got down in the basement. He said, I'm not quitting. I ain't quitting my church. Everybody can get mad, do whatever they want to, but I'm sticking with my church. You're not going to run me off. You're not going to throw me out. I'm here. I'm here. I'm with this thing. And brother, that old man got down in there and singing. And it touched that guy's heart. And he felt real guilty. And he went and told some of his friends who went down there and said, man, we've been wrong. And he called up the other group and said, look, y'all, we didn't act right about this. We disagree, but I'm, will you forgive us? And they forgive. And they got back together and had a great church there because that one old man decided he wasn't going to fall out. Amen. Thank God there's some people like that That'll say, I'm in here. Look, there's some I worry about from Sunday to Sunday, brother. Yeah. I don't know if I've done said something else they didn't like. They're going to be there. They've quit. They've come back. they quit. Come back. But there's some Amen. that says, we're going to take these, this little bunch of kids we got and we're going to take them home to the Father. Amen. Great preacher one time was preaching a revival meeting. And during this revival meeting, this great preacher, he said, uh, he preached that first night and he said it's tied to the banjo string. He said nothing happened, nobody moved, there wasn't no conviction, there wasn't no rejoicing. He said, I can't believe it. He said I, they'd done a lot of advertising, they had great singing, the place was packed full. He said it was deader than four o'clock. He said the next night he prayed, went back, same thing. Just tight, wouldn't move. And he went back to his room he got down and he got down on his face and he prayed all day and he said, God, please, 
God, please. God, please. He went back Wednesday night. He said, Wednesday night he preached. He said, people stand and give the invitation. He said, about halfway through the invitation, there's a woman come out of the pews back here just bawling. And she's just holding her face like that, bawling, and coming down the aisle like that. He thought, boy, we finally got, somebody's finally moving. And she's bawling her eyes out, and but she didn't come to the altar. She stopped about the third seat and went in there and grabbed another woman and hugged her neck. And she started bawling. Both those women come out bawling and hit that altar. And he said when they did, every woman in that church got down around them and started crying. They all wound up having, long story short, they all got right with each other. And they had revival and a bunch of people got saved. And what it was, them two women were like the big shot women in the church. They, done, they organized everything. They done the nursery. They done the, uh, the sent the flowers. And people, somebody died. They, and they went to the nursery. And they done this and done that. And they was mad at each other. And everybody in there knew it. And when them two women got right, everybody else did, and revival came. That's what I'm talking about tonight. I wouldn't want to sit there and think, maybe I'm the one the devil might use. It ain't really important that you're right or who's right. I tell her all the time, it ain't who's right, it's what's right. No matter who's right, it's what's right, people. Do what's right. Well, I know I'm right. It don't matter. So maybe, maybe you are. Who cares? It's what's right. See that you fall not out, by the way. Come on, girls, get a song. If God's speaking to your heart here tonight, and you feel like I've done some things, I've said some things that the devil might be using to hinder this revival in Southridge Baptist Church. What if, what if you died and somebody died and went to hell because of your stubbornness? Because of your life you're living and things you're mad about. They're going to sing. Maybe you need to go to somebody. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know nothing about nobody in here. Maybe just hug their neck and say, look, I ain't, I ain't right. Me and you need to get right with each other. Let's obey the Lord here tonight. Let's all stand tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you, God, for South Ridge Baptist Church. God, do what ought to be done here tonight. Help all these young people. Help all these mamas and daddies. God, I pray that you'd work in every heart and every life. God, whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing it, y'all. While they sing tonight, while they sing, you come. Amen. While they sing, you come. Come on. Come on, girls. Come on, young lady. Come on, young man. Amen. 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 I wish that I Amen. Could you can't go back. But I tell you what you can do. You can serve God from here on. That's right. Come on, girls. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's obey the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want to get my heart right. I want to get my heart right. I want to get my heart right. Amen. Come on, girl. So here I am. Use me, Lord. Give me words to sing and say. Let me love, let me live, let me give myself away. Here's my hands, here's my feet. Here's my feet. Amen. All yeah. I have is oh my God here tonight. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, young let man. Come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Don't fall out, by the way. I'm sticking in here. I can't go back, but I can live for you today. Go ahead, go ahead, sing. Yeah, go to God. Yeah, go to God. Woo! Yeah. Hey, you can't go back, but you can make it right tonight and live for the Lord from here on. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to God. That's right. Come on, y'all. If love Amen. was just Amen. a show, I oh, think God. I'd oh, God, do a miracle right here. But oh, God, please. God, do something right here tonight. Please, God, do something right here tonight. Amen, sing. So, so here I am. Use me, Lord. Amen. Give me words, words. to sing and Amen. say. Amen. Come on, now. Let me love. Let me live. Let me give myself away.
for you today. I can live for you today. Amen. While they sing, come on now. Say that. So here I am. You say that tonight. Here I am. Use me, Lord. Here I am. Use me, Lord. Give me come on, words boys. Come on. Come on. Let's get it right with God let here tonight. Let me love. Let me live. Let me give myself away. All I have is yours complete. Amen. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back. I can't go back. But I can live for him today, glory to God. One more time, girl. While they sing, you need to go to somebody and hug their neck. Good time to do it. Good time to do it right now. Let the Holy Ghost lead you tonight. You obey God. You obey God right now. Get let your heart right. Love, let everything between you and God live, lay it down there. Get it right. And God will do it great. Come, come on. Use my Here's hands. my hands. Here's Use my, feet. my feet. Amen. All I have is yours Amen. complete. Amen. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back. But I can live for you today. She's playing softly tonight. It's just that simple. Just get it right with God. Whatever it is, maybe it's something I said. Maybe it's something the Lord dealt with you that I didn't even mention tonight. And the Holy Ghost put his finger on something in your heart. I told you last night, this church has potential. I'm telling you, you do. It ain't like this everywhere. It ain't like this everywhere where you got kids sitting on the front rows. It ain't like this everywhere. Hardly nowhere. And I mean the right kind of church. The right Bible. The right belief. It's very rare anymore. Don't let the, not some stupid little something hinder you from being what God wants you to be. Amen. I'll tell you what I'll do. I, I, I'll, I promise you tonight, by the grace of God, I will do everything I can to be ready for tomorrow night. Amen. If everybody in here, if we'd all say, Lord, whatever, you, you want something different in my life? Convict me. If I'm doing something wrong, I quit it. Lord, I, I, need to, I need to do this or that, or don't do this or don't do that. Lord, I want to see you do something in our church. Amen. See that you fall not out, by the way. Make up your mind. It ain't always easy. Church ain't always wonderful. Sometimes you leave feeling good. Sometimes you leave feeling terrible. But that's got nothing to do with it. Let's take all this corn home to the Father and not fall out by the way. Amen? All right. Go ahead, preacher.